So, you know, just so everyone knows, I do have a real job. I'm just so new at it that I really can't tell anybody. Also, um, totally changed my talk around here. So um, I invite any conversation or anything during the talk. Don't feel like it's an interruption. I'm always about thought sharing and things of that nature. So um, I'm just going to jump right in. So uh, talk is into the Spider-Verse, how George Floyd and Miles Morales changed how we design for uh, minority communities. Um, and also be due to recent events um, and how Virgil reminded us to remain authentic. So um, just a little backstory on me so that things kind of make sense. Um, born and raised in Chicago, currently living in Phoenix, um, went to Howard, um, born in the 80s, but a child of the 90s. So love Michael Jordan, all Jordan gym shoes. I am a sneakerhead. Um, so all these things kind of made me who I am as far as um, a designer and things like that, because I feel like we're all just the sum of all of our experiences. So this is what the outline for the original talk looked like. So it started with like ancient Afri African graphic writing, um, moved into typography, pictograms, and templating of white supremacy. So it was really historical when it comes to the African American experience and how we have um, basically interacted with design and and communities of design and and been basically targeted um, in a lot of ways. Um, but I decided to change things a bit because uh, that kind of stuff can get heavy. And I felt like real life examples of what I'm trying to get across would actually be a lot better. Um, so I, just to get started from that actual talk, um, the ancient African graphic languages, um, a lot of these languages we take from today, a lot of these symbols, a lot of these foundational um, instrumental elements are things that we use today in a lot of design, especially when designing for African-American or Afro-Latino or Black communities globally. So just wanted to kind of show you that as a little bit of background um, and really, um, you know, show how these are kind of like these ancient fundamental design elements that, that we kind of never even talk about. So um, just getting into it, um, wanting to start with kind of like cultural design ethos. That's really how I look at design and getting through things. So um, starting with kind of this first t-shirt that I designed for um, our ERG. I really wanted it to be not like the other t-shirts that the ERGs had. I really wanted it to um, really show um, a lot of personality into who we were as a Black community at a tech company. A lot of us very nerdy, very technical, and really tapping into a lot of those um, cultural references for so for a lot of us nerds, um, a lot of the characters in that list, a lot of those names are the ones that we have those personal connections to that a lot of communities may not. So really pushing yourself to do kind of like that first shirt, because really I was hesitant about it, but really it's kind of what introduced me to design outside of web design. I guess a little bit of background. I started off as a web designer. Um, and so this was one of my first objects that I actually designed that, that I got to physically see. Um, and so this was kind of like the accompanying hat because you can't have a t-shirt without a hat. Um, and really this actually started me framing my mind around designing objects as souvenirs because as a, a modern narrative in my design language, um, people really like souvenirs and things that really remind them of that moment and, and tell people that they were there. So this was another hat for that ERG that I got into. Um, so that brings me to my first slide. And so this is my first time kind of designing a talk in this manner. So the red slides are going to be cheat codes um, that I have come across in my own design experience and being able to um, really identify 
um, those moments and those thought processes that really make it who, you know, I am as a designer. So um, embed ethos into design. So ethos, one of those words that you probably picked up in college, ethos and pathos, ethos being like the character, um, things like that. So really embed character and, and, and actual references into the design. No more of that stale Apple white space design. We're not, we're not doing sterile design anymore. Um, where's my cursor? There we go. Boop. So moving forward. So a lot of designs that I did for our ERG. Um, so original sticker designs that really um, talked about um, our, our mission statement, um, Black History uh, Month imagery um, for the ERG and a, um, a t-shirt that I, the, la the latest t-shirt before I left the company um, that I created because I really wanted to um, stop just using the regular badge or logo um, and really um, embed the tech aspects of our company culture as well as this black ERG. So um, put it into code um, and threw it on a t-shirt. So um, after kind of doing a lot of these like individual projects and things like that, um, that's when I started looking at and wondering, you know, what's my signature? And I feel like if you can answer this question, you like 100% got it. Like you're ahead of the game. It, 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 it's, it but it takes time to answer this question. So um, if you can answer it, kudos to you. You are absolutely killing it. So um, moving forward, um, I was asked in the company to do um, a lot of projects for a lot of different ERGs, a lot of like cultural moments. So as you see here, a lot of different like pride designs and how I really wanted to like reinterpret the rainbow that's been, you know, used and overhashed. Um, my first time doing like a full color supplemented t-shirt and really doing like tone on tone um, when it came to the logo things that nobody had ever tried before. Um, and even a logo here for um, a program to to garner more um, referrals called Plus One. So really digging into the nostalgia of tech and pixelation and things like that. So um, really figuring out that my signature was embedding cultural ethos into design and everything that I do, but you know making it different. Um, so I would say from these experiences I picked up. Uh, you know, don't limit yourself. Like people are going to ask you to um, do things and they may feel outside of your wheelhouse, but do it anyway. Like say yes and figure it out. Like you can figure it out. Google's out there. It's it's figure outable. Um, so this is also around the time. Fast forward. Um, Get Afrotech 2018. Um, the company had been attending Afrotech, but we, it was the first time exhibiting. Um, and it was a community where we had no brand recognition. Um, and we really couldn't just show up expecting people to know who we are and want to apply. Um, so really had to step outside my comfort zone from web design and designing these objects to really designing experiences. So I really had to look at, you know, what design meant and, and what and really what that is. And so um, looking at some of, you know, the people I look up to, um, you know, even architects. And um, this is a quote that I kind of pulled, but, you know, I take out the word architecture and replace it with design. It's like to create design is to put in order and then put what in order function and objects. So I look at that as like, storytelling. So I'm tasked with Afrotech 2018. We're showing up for the first time. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be an expo booth. And then my boss comes to me and says, it's a 95 square foot space, enclosed space that we now need to fill and figure out what to do with. And I'm panicking. So my next cheat code is always have mentors and question everything. So I reached out to someone I look at as one of my mentors, another uh, as I call them, kid from Chicago who who grew up with a lot of the same um, cultural references that I did. Jason Maiden, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, he was one of the youngest heads of design for Jordan. Um, 
you know, just a little anecdote about him. Uh, Jordan releases were always on Fridays. And so as a Chicago kid, you know, we would cut school to go get the shoes. Cause if you're not, if you're not there at the release, you're not getting the shoes. So he realized this when he came into that position and he honestly changed the release dates to Saturday so that no more kids were cutting school. So um, he, I, I would say he's one of those designers that looks at design holistically and not just in objects. And that's what I was now forced to do. Um, so he told me to go with my gut. So I did. So we began designing this experience. Um, it started with, for me, the communications and what that would look like, really tapping into um, a lot of elements of ancient graphic design languages. Um, and in doing that, there was a lot of what I wanted to be able to do to really speak to this Black tech community. Um, and in working at a tech company, people may, the people that you got to get approval from may not always understand, you know, what you're trying to do. So always be prepared for cultural education. Um, so in what I wanted to do during this experience that was truly... Um, inspired by um, the show A Different World, and I'll explain that in a minute, um, is create basically different rooms that would tell the story of GoDaddy in the Black community. So you see in that first image, those are those blocks are our actual customers that own businesses and use products. And it talks about, you know, what their business is, how they use the product when it started. Um, you see in that next image, um, that was um, a photo booth where the BIT stood for Black in Tech. Um, and so that was my way of getting, of, of following another modern design narrative that, that I have kind of thought of is that people want to be immersed in the experience. Um, so the photo booth actually created gifts. So it actually gave you, again, this souvenir of you being immersed into this Black in Tech experience. And then the next slide, the next slide, not the, the next image um, is a picture of um, an actual lounge that we had where we highlighted actual members of our Black in Tech ERG, um, but also not only highlighted them, but had them um, there in person because we believe that, well, I believe that um, a lot of times a company can say, yes, we love diversity and we want to do all this stuff with diversity. Um, and it's not really believable, but when people actually get to talk to the individuals that work there and get their firsthand experiences, they actually start to believe it. So that's also part of my like immersive um, design and people wanting to be, you know, immersed in the experience. You're actually getting to talk to the employees. So next, um, just, you know, holistically creating the experience, you know, to entice people to want to come. We created um, party packs that we gave out every day at the conference because Avrotech has these huge after parties. And so we gave out two tickets, sunglasses, Advil, mugs. It was a keychain. Um, and basically we used the utilized the phrase sunglasses and Advil tonight is about to be mad real because, you know, that speaks specifically to that community. Um, so in wanting to do all this, I absolutely had to create presentations for our brand team to truly explain to them, you know, why we were doing this, why we were tapping into this community, why we were using, you know, these references, especially the word blurred, which if you don't know, stands for black nerd. So wanting to use BIT wanting to use blurred, wanting to use a lot of these accents and textures that were not wax print, but, you know, really tapped into a lot of those ancient graphic design fundamentals. Um, and so through that, I ended up creating what I like to call my personal design language. So, um, you know, creation for um, better um, design that's better for cultural consumption. And what that means is actual embedding those cultural references, but also making it so that people outside of that culture understand it. They may not be able to connect with it fully. They may not know what it is, but they can see it and understand it. Um, embed it personal cultural references. So all up and through there, you see a lot of my blackness through a lot of my design, especially when, you know, connecting with those communities. Um, 
you know, um, using modern narratives, making things exclusive, creating immersive experiences, knowing that people want to know more. Um, also being uncompromised and unfiltered with existence as resistance. So when it comes to a lot of these historically excluded communities, utilizing that cultural existence as a form of resistance when it comes to a lot of these sterile design um, frameworks that we see with a lot of companies, you know, it's different. Um, signs of transparency, that human interaction. So again, having, you know, people on site, those individual, you know, employees that people can talk to. Um, commentary of cultural moments. Like, so asking yourself, why does this have to exist now? Um, making things that actually have commentary on what's going on in the moment. Um, and then looking at your audiences, being able to speak to um, the designer and the non-designer all at once and everybody being able to pull from what they need from that experience. So from that, I also say, Listen to the kids, bro. And when I say that, I don't exactly mean like listen to kids. But what I mean is like tap into the communities that you're designing for and really utilize their knowledge. Like so this taps into like the UX research framework, doing the research, asking the questions, getting the feedback from those communities. You never want to be creating for a community and it turns out completely cringy because you never even talk to that community about it. So moving forward, um, just images from past lesbians who tech experiences where I tapped into that immersion, tapped into that people wanting souvenirs where we created this photo booth of the Castro. We created this um, also the, the, the concept of the ready made, having this marquee with these interchangeable words and phrases that you could hold and take pictures with. And then having this souvenir that really connected with the neon lights of the Castro Theater, where we were in that moment um, and really, uh, you know, connecting with um, being queer in tech and, and being the future of tech and, and that existing for that moment. Um, these billboards I created for um, the European markets, especially in the UK, when we were seeing a lot of those um, issues with the football clubs and the fans, and it was a lot of racial tension. Um, and so usually with a lot of the UK stuff, I would tap into people that, you know, were ethnically ambiguous and things like that. But for that, I wanted to actually tap into people that looked like historically excluded, excluded communities and really connect with them in those moments to say that you belong here and your potential is boundless. And that is totally different from, you know, what your, your current state, your current country is telling you. Um, so also for designers, what make what works for us a lot are analogies. Make analogies, see if they work constantly. Ask yourself, question everything. Does this work? If I'm utilizing something for this community, will it work? Whoo, I got two minutes to get through the rest of this. So um, where I really started to tap into that, Afrotech 2019, um, looking at, you know, the, their booth design that they gave us, we scaled down, but I really wanted to figure out how to tap into this community um, and still be able to have an impact without having a 95 square foot space. So I did it through um, design and re-articulation of designs used prior. So remember, we tapped in the blurred for the year before, so we kept moving with the blurred just with a different design back. So for this year, really tapped into the the study and the and the use of wax print. Um, so if you're not familiar with wax print, um, it's used in a lot of um, African countries um, for a lot of clothing, also used as a form of communication. A lot of the popular ones have names. This particular one has Rolls Royce. Um, as we connected with our Black ERG, um, we found that with that name, the design, it really connected with them on a level of Black excellence. Um, so also tapping into those souvenirs, we made enamel pins. Um, um, we made sure the card backer that held the enamel pin um, also had those those African design elements. So this is where I really, really, you know, solidified, you know, cultural design ethos, what that looks like and what it truly looks like holistically. So moving forward, um, we utilize those same design elements for a lot of the Black ERG things. We This is our Juneteenth kit um, that we sent out ahead of um, the Juneteenth holiday once the company announced that they would be celebrating it. Um, these are also um, elements where I kind of changed how um, GoDaddy designed shirts. They had never put the logo down a sleeve before. Mind blown, totally tripped them out, but it was trendier. It was something that would speak to those markets. Um, even having 
um, T-shirts with the logo, but also the country um, in their language so that they felt seen, but also included into the company, even though they weren't in the U.S. So really expounding upon that really global globalization of the company. So moving forward as designers, I want us all to have the freedom to design experiences and no longer designing just objects. So this is an image from Jade Purple Brown, where she really uses color and immersion um, to, to design full experiences. Um, also moving into designers like Joe Fresh Goods or Shani Crow, also from Chicago, all these people are from Chicago, um, who really immerse their own cultural ethos into their ways of design. Shani uses braids. Um, Joe uses streetwear in collaborations with larger companies. So I say all that to say, as designers, you are um, the sums of your own cultural experiences and what you know culturally and what you have gone through. So embed that into everything that you do. Lean on the communities around you to embed their culture into design. And absolutely, 100% at the end of the day, you can do this too. So insert yourself here. And that's all I got. If there are any questions. Oh man, Ashton, so much awesome information and beautiful designs. Like that was amazing. Everybody in the comments, <laughs> I, I have that sticker. I want that shirt. <laughs> All of that. Um, so yes, everyone, um, for those of you who have any questions for Ashton, go ahead and throw those in the chat right now. Uh, she's got her website as well as is this your social media for all accounts? Yep, all accounts. Perfect. Great. So that's the best way to get in touch with you if they want to connect, have further questions, anything like that. I'm like, well, maybe there's no questions. I'm like, <laughs> but um, is there so is there a preferred way for you to for them to get in contact with you if uh, they want to have if they have any follow up questions or anything like that? Sure. Um, there's like Instagram. There's my website where I have my email, um, Instagram, Twitter, um, any of those places. If you find me on Facebook, I'm there too. Oh, there is a question. Um, how do you integrate the idea of corporate norm design versus cultural design? Um, you just got to push boundaries. Um, you have to be ready to push the envelope. You have to be prepared to um, explain what you're doing and how you're doing it. So um, let's say that whole immersive experience for 2018 um, Afrotech, I really had to explain to our brand team, one, we did not create the phrase black in tech. So other people in this community will totally understand the letters B, I, T and what they stand for in this experience. Um, I had to kind of school them on what wax print was and what that meant to um, a lot of black and African communities. So being prepared to do that research on your cultural embedding um, is, is really how you get around that. And usually a lot of those teams that don't understand what you're doing because you're able to explain it, they're just going to back off because they don't want to seem like, you know, <laughs> the guy that said no to, to doing actual cultural stuff. Um, let's see. How much do you rely on use of designs to build these experiences? Are you creating and using a library of elements in these themes or generating this from scratch each time? Um, I would kind of say from scratch, honestly, um, some of my favorite, so I use a lot of like random references when it comes to design. So this is one of my favorite books, How Design Makes Us Think and Feel and Do Things. Mm -hmm. um, I keep a lot of things that inspire me around. Um, so I kind of de dedicated this talk to Virgil since, you know, he recently passed away. So this is a book that I definitely keep in my library when it comes to inspiration, um, but also I look at the communities that I'm just knocked over a ton of Legos. <laughs> but also I look at the communities that I'm actually trying to speak to. Um, and I kind of study them historically um, and look at what they love culturally and then begin to try to embed that in design. So I don't have like a library. I do use like mood boards and stuff. So Behance can be your friend, um, things of that nature. But no, I, I don't use like a specific library or anything. Um, yeah. See, I love your... Pulling from Black history, yeah, there's this one. I'm gonna put the whole thing up on the board, it's a long one. 
um, come through in your work. I'd love to hear more about your process experience and integrating Black history into your work. Doing my research. Okay, so like I did like a more in-depth historical talk at a different um, conference this year, um, and that's on my link. The slides are on my LinkedIn, um, and I'm gonna post the video to um, to the talk on my website today. Um, so that kind of goes through the entire. Um, eight, from like ancient graphic design elements all the way up into present e BLM, um, you know, creating brands for movements and all of that good stuff. So it really talks about typography, templating, all that really good stuff. Also reach out to me. I'm also down to like have those like conversations too, because that's the stuff that like really interests me. So um, definitely. And I have like resources I can send you. So find me on LinkedIn. That's the best thing we can do, Kelsey. There we go. There that's we LinkedIn. go. That's the one. <laughs> So is it just Ash, Ashton Pfizer at uh, LinkedIn? Okay. Yeah, just Ashton Pfizer on LinkedIn. Yep. Great. Awesome. Um, All right. There's another one here. Ooh, incorporating nonprofits into the strategy. Uh, thinking, 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 thinking. Um, not really. Not into branding and design. Not yet. I haven't had that that opportunity. But I I would love that opportunity. Honestly, I would. Awesome. All right. I think. Uh, and then last but not least, I, a lot of people are curious about your presentation, if if they can receive it afterwards. Um, I believe Whitney um, will be putting references into the chat as far as if presentations will be available after the fact. Um, then, yeah. Ashton, any any last words of wisdom? Any more any more cheat codes that you got? <laughs> um, on. Just, you know, always have mentors question everything. Um, I, I honestly believe that if there is no doubt, there there could be no design. Like as designers, we're, we're problem solvers by nature. Like we, we, we problem solve, we create, we, we create to, to make life better for others. We, 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 and also like, you know, be Ikea about it. Like democratic design is dope. Like making design to make life better for others is, is just very cool. So Yes, those are my takeaways. Just be good to each other and be good to yourselves. Awesome. Well, Ashton, thank you so much for your time and energy. Everyone, please throw some love in the chat for Ashton. All right. We will be back with our next speaker momentarily. See y'all soon. <laughs>